Here comes the sun. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> it's not bad, eh? My pronouns are he, him. I study physics. Our virus is alive? Okay, Beck. Last week, mm -hmm. intelligence and ETs. What'd you think? It's great to just keep going deeper and deeper into this question and maybe one day we'll find some sort of answer. Well, do you think you've made some progress in understanding this question? The main thing of this, of this course has been what not to expect. So you think I succeeded in de-Hollywooding you? Yes, I think so. I think I never really thought of the Hollywood stuff. I think I really enjoy the Planet of the Apes fallacy in that it's something you don't think about and it's something that you just assume, but it's definitely something that you unlearn. So I thought that was very interesting. Uh -huh. And you just sort of think, oh yeah, there's an intelligence nation. Then you think, what the... What the hell? But I love, my favorite bit is the continents. Uh -huh. And actually we do have examples mm -hmm. of ecosystems on Earth that evolved independently. Did you get a sense of this debate between convergence and deep homology? Yeah, yeah, because I mean, everything links to everything, unless that there is another source of life. But even then, if there are two different independent origins of life, then there'd be the same sort of chemical base, you would think. Or they might, I don't, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know, we don't know that. But I, I like the idea of deep homology rather than convergence. Me too. <laughs> yeah, because it's so much more fun. Do, are there any other examples of a selection pressure for intelligence on Earth that you know of? Well, you could say anything that has big brain. So you could talk about mm -hmm. dolphins or you could talk mm -hmm. about uh, octopi being an, an invertebrate brain. With elephants, they have, you know, there's that whole uh, you just choose the thing that's the biggest in you and you're like, oh, that means we're better yeah. with the elephant nose. So you're it. convinced by the nasalization quotient argument that Jerison's mm. trend towards higher intelligence yes. that was invoked by Frank Drake mm. is not as uh, solid as... Yeah, I think that people will argue back against that and say that the brain largeness, they think that links back I mean the to... the human brain. The human brain. Uh, largeness w links back to uh, human-like intelligence. And that's why, that's why. It... But, but brains that are getting bigger don't seem to be getting more human-like. I mean, for example, elephant brains are bigger or, or orca whale brains are bigger than human brains and blue whale brains are bigger. They don't seem to be becoming more human-like. Mm. So, more... so, uh, so the size of the brain doesn't seem to scale with dire directionality towards human-like intelligence, it seems to me. You, you, you... I just think people taking a simplistic view see like bigger brain, more smart, even though that's better, more better. <laughs> more better. That's more better <laughs> than that. So we've reached the end of, of this course. We've just done week seven or, or part seven. So give me some perspective on the whole course, week one through seven. What do you think? I really enjoyed it and I really enjoyed the structuring of it. Um, I liked how it went from, it was 20,000 years, then 500 million years. Or 20 million. 20, 20 million, and then, then 500, 500 million, million, yeah. And then 3 billion, and then 4 billion. And then way back when. But I liked that because it was, it sort of kept zooming out from humans, which is mm. what we need to do. Mm. And mm. because you start off thinking, oh, like, we're going to find humans. And it's like, no, 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 look at the diversity of life on Earth. How do you think that's going to happen again? How, how does it even start? Like we need to explore Earth more and appreciate Earth more because we're here and we know we're not alone because we have the rest of Earth and life forms on Earth with us. Mm. And I like that. It sort of, sort of reminded me of, oh yeah, like we, we already have life on Earth. Yeah. Like how cool is that? What do you think of those whole seven weeks? What is it that you think you most disagree with my opinionated version of this history I, of humanity? I think there wasn't enough focus on sea life. Sea life. Because I think that's where everything started. As in like, it was started in either freshwater um, pools, mm -hmm. springs, or in hydrothermal vents. Right. So I think more... In uh, our entire history, before yeah. 400 million years ago. Which is why if I had a hundred billion dollars, I would invest more in um, submarines. Submarines, yeah. Uh -huh. Submarines first. So you became interested because of this course, or you wanted? I was interested what, before. And and you wanted to find out more. Yeah, I love anything sort of like development of things and like how things came to be. Uh -huh, uh -huh. I'm all about that. So okay. anything like how cities came to be, yes, how yes. Justin Simpson's came, justice systems came to be, yes, or things like that. So, but then now I'm just going back and back, and I'm right. right and as right. I go more into science, we share that interest. Mm. So would you recommend this course to your friends? Yeah, I already have been. <laughs> you have been, okay, good. Yeah. You know how we were delving deeper and deeper into the question of what life is? Mm -hmm. 
and we just went deeper and deeper into the biochemistry and all the way down. Yes. The last week, well, week six seemed to be a lot of stuff from experts, which was mm -hmm. different, interesting, but very different. Week seven was, from what I could gather, all about intelligence. Uh, what was the most interesting thing? Anything you learned that will stick with you for the rest of your life? I think William Bain's songs will <laughs> stick with me. The rest. They were pretty good. I, <laughs> I thoroughly enjoyed those. Okay. But uh, the, the Fermi Paradox, Mm -hmm. I've heard about it before, but it was well explained, and the solutions to it that you showed in it were, they were different, and they were interesting, so mm -hmm. that was good. Okay, how about, do you have any favorite, uh, oh, well, like, besides William Bain's song, do you have any other favorite video? I did. What's what? I enjoyed the, uh, I enjoyed the talk with Sarah Walker. Mm -hmm. That was... Uh, the extended one and all that was really interesting. Uh, Kathy Campbell and Norm Sleep were both great. So you interviews. listened to the full interviews of them? Yeah. Okay, all right. Anyway, uh, Kathy Campbell, Norm Sleep. Uh, Sarah Walker, as I said, was great. David Schwartzman, you weren't kidding. That was <laughs> it was really interesting and again, not what I was not what I was expecting. So I was yeah. Uh, Joe Kurt Kirsch Kirschvink. Kirschvink. Joe Thank Kirschvink, you. yes. Uh, was a uh, Again, the whole Medea hypothesis mm -hmm. is a fascinating idea, and mm -hmm. it was good to hear his perspective on it, and it was a really nice... Uh, he had such a different approach to He's the, a what would you iconoclast, do with... I think. He's a, <laughs> like, almost a con contrarian, but I, very insightful. But everyone, you say, oh, what would you do with $100 billion? And his answers were just <laughs> cocoa bananas, and I loved it. Uh, <laughs> Eric Smith, as I mm -hmm. said, I was staring at the wall for hours after that one, so that kept me up. Did Thanks you listen to the full 160? Still haven't finished the whole thing. <laughs> okay. I, I sit there, it runs for half an hour, 40 minutes, and my brain feels like it needs to cool down. <laughs> and John Long is always a pleasure. Uh -huh. Yes, so about fish heads. Somebody asks you, are we alone? What are you going to say? Uh, my honest answer mm -hmm. is, what do you mean? <laughs> That That's the right answer. <laughs> oh, yes. Does that mean Eureka, I Eureka. <laughs> When you say, what do you mean by are we alone? Mm -hmm. As you said, who is we? Mm -hmm. What is alone? Mm -hmm. What is life? What is all these things? Mm -hmm. They're rabbit holes. They go so mm -hmm. deep. Mm -hmm. And you could... Each of the parts of the question is so complicated and fascinating. But wait, let what me... do you mean? Yeah. Is but, l deal. but let me stop you. You said each is a rabbit hole, but... <laughs> But I, I think that's not necessarily true. For example, when you say, are we alone? If we say we humans, yeah. that's not a rabbit hole because we're not alone on earth. Therefore, the answer is, no, we're not alone. That's, it's an easy answer. I mean, do you like that answer? Well, if you say we humans, are we humans alone in the universe? The obvious answer is no. There's a dog right over here <laughs> and there's a tree out there. So we're not alone. That seems to me a perfectly respectable, quick answer. That's not a rabbit hole. Do you like the answer though? What do you mean? Do I like it? It's, if, if <laughs> you mean, you think there's another answer to that? Oh, Are I, we humans alone in the universe? Well, what do you mean by alone? Okay. Well, then that's that's that puts it into another. What bunch do you of questions. mean? Right, right. It it seems to be a thing where if you ask what right. do you mean, right. these terms, as you say, right. they're not particularly well defined. <clears throat> right. Right. Okay. So it it goes deeper. It gets more interesting. Yeah, I, which I, is I see. An I important see. thing to know. I think I, I'll I'll backpedal on that one. I defer <laughs> to. Right. <laughs> so what do you think of week seven? Um, I did I did enjoy it. I think this is perhaps where you'll have the most interesting conversations with me on, on these videos. Our early ancestors, the early Homo sapiens... How early? One million, two million, three million, oh, ten thousand? Well, like when Homo sapiens branched off, that was what... Well, branched off from what? From chimps? No, not chimps. Um, from what? Like Australopithecines? Homo erectus? Homo, I want to say around Homo erectus. How many okay. years ago? These are all important. These are important details, by the way, because otherwise you say, oh, we're different. We're yeah. different. Yeah. All yeah. Right, so I'm glad okay, you recognize. Homo... Um, you're turning a okay. little red. So, I'm happy that you're turning red because that detail is very important. So, okay. Homo sapiens outcompeted or. Outcompeted or... nobody. What do you mean? We survived. I'm not sure we. Okay, outcompeted. we survived while Neanderthals, Denisovians, they didn't. They right? did. You have 2% of their genes. Okay. We mixed with them and then that's what's left. But it's, it, it seems like Homo sapiens were sort of the dominant factor in the genealogy. You're saying that I have 2% Neanderthal. What's the other 98%? Okay. 
Okay, well, the, the, the people who mix with the animals. Now, wait a minute. Mm. So let's suppose that you had 10%. Let's mm. suppose 20%. So the same thing with the, with the Maoris. So if, you're, if you go down to Tasmania, and not Maori, not Maori in New Zealand, but if you go to Tasmania, there's this, hey, there are no more Tasmanians, right? But then you'll have people with 50%, 80%, 10% of mm. uh, Tasmanian Aboriginal genes. Have the, they disappeared? Many people would say yes. And then you would say, then you would use your language and say, yes, we dominated and killed them all and they're gone. No, not at all. Mm -hmm. And the fact that you have two, it could have been 5%, would that undermine your argument here? Do not, they have not disappeared. They things mix. And so that's what we are, a mixture. Okay. Okay, so you've taken the whole course. Yes. Let's try to talk, talk now we talked about week seven, now let's talk about mm -hmm. the whole course in general. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think? You like this course? Would you recommend it to a friend? I would definitely recommend it, especially to anyone who wants to go into astrophysics specifically. But um, I think it's a great, I really enjoyed it and I would encourage particularly like my physics friends to take it. I can't really, I don't know if I could really speak from someone who, who's taken a, a lot more, who, who's hit at uni to study biology. You know, I maybe it would be too simple for them. But for me, it was this. Per it was a perfect level of, of, you know, playing catch up to everything that I've kind of not paid much attention to since year ten. Well, it, regarding biology students, mm. when you're a biology student, you learn a little bit of, uh, you learn some biochemistry, but you really it's usually post Cambrian. I mean, mm -hmm. if you go to the biology department here, ninety nine percent of the efforts are post Cambrian, the last five hundred million years or so, mm -hmm. and earlier than that is kind of like. Uh, we don't do evolution that early, and we're not concerned with uh, with invertebrates. <laughs> even. Okay. Well, in other words, but you should, it's kind of like a niche of microbiologists who are interested in the evolution of life, and mm -hmm. that's not very common in any in biology departments. So, well, I would perfect. say that biology students could get a lot from it. But you said astrophysicists. Why uh, did you mean astrobiologists when you but specifically astrophysicists? I was actually last night having a conversation. I live at a college and so we do a lot of icebreakers with mm -hmm. the first years. Um, and one of them lately has been, um, if aliens came and visited Earth and invited you back to their home world, mm. would you go with them? Mm -hmm. um, which is a, actually a pretty effective icebreaker conversation, but it, obviously it, it, it sort of lent itself to what I was uh, mm -hmm. having being taken the, taking this course. Um, and a lot of people, their default is like, when, when, when you think of life beyond Earth, people act, tend to default to the idea of astrophysicists. And I think maybe it's because of the cultural impact of SETI and you really like referencing the movie Contact. It might even be because of that. And I think um, a lot of astrophysicists, sure, they might not really be interested in the search for life. They're much more concerned about, I don't know, galaxies, dark matter, etc. But there's also, there's a, a big overlap of people who are, you know, anyone who, in, who uh, is interested in stellar formation and, and the formation of planet, planetary systems and uh, studying exoplanets. I think it's important, this is a, an important thing to have sort of a, a, where you couch your knowledge, where you couch your, your goals, right? Yeah, well, well, most of this, this, this seven weeks we talk about here mm -hmm. are really, are we alone? Well, how did we get here? Mm -hmm. And so that's the, been the focus. How did we get here? The evolution of us on Earth. And much less, I mean, the second part is about, uh, you know, how many Earth-like planets there are? What are we going to do? How are we going to find life? How can we remotely detect life with these biosignature gases mm -hmm. through the mm -hmm. transit photometry? That's something, or transit spectroscopy. And uh, so that's what part two will be about. Mm -hmm. I know more about that because that's what I, I'm, a, I'm an astrophysicist. And, mm -hmm. But I'm also an astrobiologist and I've got these, in, uh, I think it's very important for us to put perspective on who we are. But uh, what was the question? You, are, you, you push, back, push back against me saying, I think it's a good thing for oh, astrophysicists. Oh, right, right, right. I mean, right. I feel like, yes. No, I, no, I didn't push back. Like, I, th I yeah. agree with you, but I was wondering why you said that. That's all. Like so. exobiologists, of course, they should take courses <laughs> on exobiology. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I think it's, it's also just, this has opened me up to being, to, um, being less comfortable with how ignorant I am in a lot of, with a lot of modern science, really. I think um, 
coming to university, you tend to be like, okay, now's the time that I specialize. And, and watching this and, and enjoying learning so much biology as I have makes me think, you know what, I'm actually doing a shit job at like setting myself up to be a good scientist by thinking, no, this isn't relevant me because it is changing how I, like from how I think about science and what I want to do to like the, the, the core basics of actually examining my, I don't know, morality, my, my values, right? In that, you know, I, I very much had to unlearn and had to challenge these biases of putting humanity at the very, at the very like forefront of, of goodness in my mind, right? And also, um, I think there's, there is like, there does often tend to be an a arrogance problem in science. Scientists are, are quite, can often come across as quite arrogant in the, in their, their value of science. And they, they think that they're at the, they have achieved the, they're working on the purpose of humanity, right? Um, and I think that this is a, a good way of actually getting people to examine their place in society by examining humanity's place in the universe, right? Well, what you said is a very a good compliment because that's what I've been trying to do. On the other mm -hmm. hand, many people accuse me of being arrogant. So am I, you said an arrogance is no good and I've been saying humility, humility, but I'm also, am I being... Am I insisting on humility in an arrogant way? Does it really matter? <laughs> like, I don't, I personally don't think so, but I think okay. maybe we, we might get painted with the same brush because um, people don't use the word arrogant with me, but they use the word smug. Smug, Which yes, is just yes, kind yes. of a, yeah, another, another way of saying arrogant. I'm not sure. Um, I'd rather be called arrogant than smug. <laughs> okay, so, yeah, so, all right. So, I am presenting views that are kind of... Uh, I wouldn't say fringe, but they are a minority among astrobiologists. Mm. And uh, that's what, and I'm, am I being smug or arrogant or uh, intimidating in the way I present this? Um, I wouldn't say intimidating. Like you do make, you do make an effort to have a diversity of views. And I think ultimately like the arrogant thing would be um, to not share knowledge. Don't you think? Because Man, that's more a smug, right? Yeah. <laughs> Arrogant is when you put a, this is the way it is and you share it, but you, you don't want it to question or you don't think it should be questioned or can be questioned. But I also, I think mm -hmm. you shouldn't be expected to teach things that you don't, that you disagree with, right? That you, or, well, or there's not address it. For the... looking at both sides to get a, a mm -hmm. measured point of view. I mean, there's. I mean, to a degree, you do that. And you do specify, especially when you're going sort of further. And also, I think it's, it's, it is a, there is a difference between, especially when we're talking about like the converge, convergent stuff and, and viewing human intelligence as this highly desirable niche of evolution that we should expect elsewhere in the universe. Um, is that really arrogance? It's just like a, a, a difference of opinion. Well, I, I would call that arrogance. I would call it, I, I sometimes use the word vanity a lot, right? And I, I think that uh, that is definitely the motivation behind mm -hmm. that set of views. And because I don't see any more objective evidence for it. Well, it seems to me that you have no choice but to be arrogant. <laughs> you know, we're like, <laughs> we're, we're like early Christian monks arrogant telling people what to do. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, yeah. But they were doing it out of. <laughs> Their yeah. ideological conviction to exactly. the truth of what they were believing yeah. in. Yeah. yeah, not trying to say that, not <laughs> trying to directly compare your ideological views, but... Mm. I'm trying to uh, present an interestingly different view on astrobiology that I think should be wider known, and I think mm -hmm. it'll help people unlearn some of their prejudices. And uh, that's all, that's all. I, and I'm having fun. Actually, I'm doing this because I'm learning so much, because mm. I had to learn an awful lot to, to put some of these ideas together, and that's why I'm doing it. I'm more for myself, a little bit selfish thing, the reason for doing this. See, arrogance all the way down. Yeah. That's why I. That's why I helped. Wait, you know, because it benefits me. 